Our orator for today is Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara. The Pulimud oration commenced in 1991 as a tribute to one of the most eminent principals of Visakha Vidyalaya, Ms. Susan George Pulimud. The Susan George Pulimud Educational Trust was established in 1996 and the annual oration takes place each year on the 23rd of July. The oration recognizes the academic and professional achievements of our past pupils who have excelled in their respective fields at the national and international level. Our auditor is being escorted by Madam Principal Mrs. Manomi Senviratna, the members of the Pulimut Educational Trust, and the office bearers of the All Girl Association of Visakha Vidyale. Our auditor has been accorded the Guard of Honour by the Senior Prefects Guild of Visakha Vidyale and has been graciously welcomed by Thisrani Malagoda, the Head Prefect of Visakha Vidyale, by presenting her with a bouquet of flowers. begin the proceedings of the day, we now have the traditional lighting of the oil lamp. I cordially invite Professor Shanika Karunasekara, our orator, Mrs. Manomi Senviratna, Principal and Chairperson of the Susan George Educational Trust, members of the Susan George Pulimud Educational Trust, Mrs. Sita Sirivodhana, Mrs. Shanta Gunaratna, Mrs. Srimati Jaisuria, Professor Anoja Fernando, and the office bearers of the Bisaka Vidyale All Girls Association, Dr. Shamini Dialmeda, and Mrs. Punsirini Malavi, Vice Presidents, Dr. Nishanti Mimalaratna, and Ms. Dinusha Abedira, Joint Secretaries, to kindly light the traditional oil lamp.
is my pleasure to invite the chairperson of the trust, the president of the All Girls Association of Visakha Vidyalaya, Madam Principal Manomi Senviratna, our orator Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara, and Mrs. Sita Sirivodhana to take their seats at the head table on stage. Next, we have the Susan George Pulimut commemoration song that was composed by the late Miss Daisy Karavita and sung by the choir of Visak Vidyale. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the commemoration song. I now invite the chairperson of the trust and the president of the All Girls Association of Visakha Vidyale, Madam Principal, Mrs. Manomi Senviratna, to deliver the welcome address. Good evening, everybody. Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara, past principals, past and present deputy principals and teachers, trustees of the Polymode Educational Trust, Visakians and distinguished guests. I warmly welcome all of you to the 
33rd Susan George Pulimud Memorial Oration today. It is with much pleasure, pleasure that I preside over this very prestigious event in the Visaka Vidyalaya All Girls Association calendar featuring our eminent past students who have excelled in their chosen fields and served the country and society wherever they are. They are respected professionals both nationally and internationally. Their achievements are numerous. Many of them have been pioneers. They bring glory to our school and we can be proud of them. The Pulimud Memorial Oration is held in appreciation of a much loved and revered principal of Visaka Vidyalaya who served the school for 22 years from 1945 to 1967. Her contribution to the development and progress of our school is enormous. Her passionate belief that science education will enable women to participate fully in the development efforts of the country has paid dividends. Her vision has borne fruit. As we have seen, the explosion of career women emerging from Visaka Vidyalaya in the last 70 years. Visaka is a much sought after school. We have an intake of students at grade one level and again at grade six level. For the all island scholars, we strive to give the best to our, stu our students who come from far away places with great expectations. Over the years, the principles of Visaka have uh, upheld the highest high, high standards of academic and extracurricular activities in the school, giving our students many opportunities to find their niche, to participate, enjoy, and excel. It is with immense pride that I mention our achievement in our achievements in the last year. In academics, Visaka excelled once again, surpassing one's own previous achievement with remarkable success at the GCE Advanced Level Examination 2023 with 161 students obtained in three A's, 59 students got two A's and one B. Chamatka Setunga obtained the district first, island third in the comma stream while Isuri Indunil has secured the District 3rd and Island 8 in, in this art stream. Hesadi Senadira became the District 3rd and Nisali Arangala has got the District 6th in the Biological Science stream. Out of the total 577 who faced the 2023 advanced level examination, 520 have been qualified for university entrance at a success rate of 90%. According to the 2022 advanced level latest statistics issued by the University Grants Commission, admission to the state universities by our Visakians is very high with a total of 69%. Among of them, 46 students have already entered the state medical faculties, while 28 students have got registered at the engineering faculties in the island. There are 40 students in the management faculties and 70 students became eligible for the arts faculties in Sri Lankan universities. Further, 75 students have entered the biological science faculties, whereas 35 students have got enrolled to the physical science faculties. Based on the GCE advanced level and ordinary level research analysis uh, done over the pa past years, it is observed that Visaka Vidyalaya as the best and the only leading school among the rest of the schools in the island in which students are being enrolled from the grade one onwards. 
that was brought to light by the Commissioner General of Examination at the prize giving held last Wednesday. Hence, I am delighted to reveal the Visaka Vidyalaya maintained and still maintains its legacy to feed universities and faculties with the highest number of undergraduates. GCE, GCE O-Level Examination 2023 results, which is not yet been released, I am positive, will be another great success as usual. In the fields of extracurricular activities and sports, Visaka Vidyale has produced talent sports stars who are capable of competing at global tournaments. Ganga Seniviratna, who was a student from grade one at Visaka, is a one much exemplary Vis Visakian who has been qualified to represent Sri Lanka in the women's 100, 100 meters backstroke swimming competition at 2024 Olympics in Paris. We all should be proud of Ganga for this outstanding achievement, bringing glory to her alma mater. Among several international and national level sports achievements, Visaka won Asian Youth Chess Championship 2023, Asia Pacific Diving Championship at the Bimstek Youth Aquatic Championship 2023, South Asian Youth Table Tennis Runners Up, 21st Asian Junior Squash Championship and Asia Pacific Water Polo Championship are commendable. The three gold medals won at the International Karate Tournament held in Malaysia and the bronze medal won at the World Annual Children's Picture Contest 2023 should be also appreciated. Our aim at Visaka is to produce balanced individuals with confidence and commitment who will be the future leaders in their chosen professional fields Education is not mere textbook learning and successes at examinations. We need to inculcate value education and produce young women who can face challenges, be, be for, forthright, courageous, and yet be sensitive and caring. They will be the influencers of the future generations, making them responsible and concerned citizens. We at Visaka Vidyalaya provide many opportunities for our girls to develop their latent talents and skills and be of service to our country and the society. I must acknowledge the dedication of the members of the Susan George Pulimund Educational Trust and the Visaka Vidyalaya All Girls Association for facilitating the continuation of this very prestigious event for 33 years. As the principal of Visaka Vidyalaya, I extend my sincere appreciation to the enthusiastic member of the VVOGA who have supported me in my endeavors to improve the quality of education and facilities in the school. Their unwavering support is invaluable and I deeply admire their loyalty and dedication to their alma mater. Thank you very much. I now call upon engineer Buddhika Disanayaka to deliver the citation. Good evening, everyone. Madam Chairman of the Pulibut Educational Trust and the Principal of Isaka Vidyalaya, Mrs. Manomi Seneviratna, Mrs. Sita Sirivardana, our guest speaker, Professor Shanika Karunasekara, trustees, past principals, past and present teachers, and members of Isaka Vidyalaya All Girls Association and distinguished guests. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude for the opportunity given to me to deliver this citation for our esteemed guest speaker, Professor Shanika Karunasekara. It is a true honor to speak about a person that I deem exceptional, not only in her achievements, but in who she is. 
Shanika was my schoolmate, A-level classmate, and my closest friend. I have known her and had the privilege of calling her my closest friend for almost 45 years. I knew her parents personally. Her father, Milton Karuna Sekara, was in the Sri Lankan Administrative Service, and mother, Sujiva Karuna Sekara, who passed away a few years ago, was an English teacher. They have always been kind and humble people who have helped to shape the inspiring journey that Shanika has taken. In fact, one of my earliest memories of us as friends include Shanika and I studying together while her wonderful mother affectionately prepared us delicious meals. But let me first paint a picture of what Shanika was like at school. Shanika was an active student, a true all-rounder, and an academically gifted individual. She was regular prize winner at the school prize giving. She also represented the house team in track events. She was a girl guide who achieved the President's Guide Award and was a school prefect in 1981 to 82. She was also much loved by her friends and peers for her generosity and willingness to help others, qualities that she still retains today. Her school career culminated in 1982 when she completed the GCA A-level examinations with flying colors achieving the best results in the physical science stream, obtaining A grades for all four subjects. Her academic journey flourished further once she started her higher education in 1984. She started her undergraduate degree in electronic and telecommunication engineering at the University of Moritua. She topped the batch every year and graduated with first class honors in 1990, winning the UNESCO gold medal for best engineering student from a cohort of over 230 students, showcasing her exceptional talent as a female in a male-dominated engineering discipline. Winning a Cambridge Commonwealth Trust Fellowship awarded by the University of Cambridge, she completed her PhD in electrical engineering at the University of Cambridge, UK in 1994. Her first ever paper won the Best Student Paper Award at a leading international conference. She also won the Peter Roth Prize from Churchill College, Cambridge University for her research. I also need to acknowledge that Shanika has had amazing support from her husband, Dr. Ajit Gunatilaka, who was also a University of Moritua graduate and a Fulbright scholar who obtained his PhD from the Ohio State University, USA. Currently, he's a scientist working for the Australian government. Together, they have two beautiful children, a son, who is currently reading for a PhD in biochemistry and pharmacology, and a daughter who is a medical doctor. Clearly, brilliance runs in the family. Shanika has been able to reach extraordinary heights in her career. Allow me to present the academic and professional achievements of Professor Shanika Karunasekara. While there are numerous achievements to mention, I have selected a few to highlight today. Shanika started her post-PhD professional career in 1995 at Lucent Technologies Bell Labs Innovations USA. Within just four years, she was honored as a distinguished engineer for her technical and leadership contributions including a hundredfold performance improvement in Lucent's network management system. Having moved to Australia, Shanika joined the University of Melbourne, the number one ranked university in Australia, 
where she is now a full professor. During her 21-year career at the University of Melbourne, she had made significant contributions to research, teaching, and diversity of the engineering discipline, and has held many leadership positions. Currently, she is the Deputy Dean Academic in the Faculty of Engineering and Information Technology. She led the software engineering discipline overseeing the development of a highly sought after master's degree in software engineering. Her excellence in teaching has been recognized with numerous teaching awards throughout her time at the University of Melbourne, including the prestigious Kelvin Medal for the best lecturer in the faculty, and an Australian national award, the National Carrick Citation for Outstanding Contributions to Education. Professor Shanika's primary research interests lie in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and distributed computing. Her research explores the opportunities and challenges posed by big data and artificial intelligence. During her career, she has published over 200 papers in a number of Q1 journals and conferences in her research discipline. She's a globally renowned scholar with her published works, accumulating over 6,000 citations, showcasing an impressive H index of 38. She had the honor of mentoring and supervising 30 PhD students to successful graduation. Finally, I welcome Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara, our esteemed guest and my dear friend, to deliver the 33rd Susan George Pulimud oration on artificial intelligence and its implications. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Buddhika Dasanayake. I now cordially invite Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara to deliver the 20, uh, 33rd Susan George Polymood Memorial Oration. Good evening, everyone. Madam Chairperson of the Susan George Polymood Education Trust and Principal of Visaka Vidyalaya, Mrs. Manomi Senaviratna, Mrs. Sita Sriwadana, and the members of the Trust. President and Executive Committee of the Visaka Vidyalaya All Girls Association, past principals, past and present teachers, Visakians, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Buddhika, for that kind introduction and the sincere friendship. It is a great honor and a privilege to be standing here today in front of this esteemed audience to deliver the 33rd Susan George Pulimud Oration in memory of one of our school's Billard principals. Although I have delivered many speeches on different occasions in my career, this oration is unique and very special to me. It gives me goosebumps with many nostalgic memories of my school days, which I cherish. I am particularly delighted that many of my school friends, with whom I share fond memories, are in this audience today. I sincerely thank the Pulimud Oration Committee for honoring me with the opportunity of being this year's orator. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all my school teachers for molding me into a confident person with an ambition for lifelong learning. It is likely the dedication those teachers demonstrated to support student learning that planted the seed in me to be an educator myself. Beyond Visaka, I have been fortunate to learn from and be mentored by many great women and men, without whom I would not be standing here today. I am grateful to all of them. I also want to thank my parents for the unconditional love and support they have given me throughout. From my early days, they showed me the value of education 
integrity and hard work and always supported my passions without any pressure on the outcomes. I'm delighted to have my father, who is 93 years old, in this audience today. Unfortunately, my mother did not live to witness this occasion. I believe she would have been one of the happiest people if she were alive today. As we have gathered here today to pay tribute to Mrs. Susan George Pulimud, I would like to say a few words about her life and the great service she has done to Visaka and STEM education for women. Mrs. Pulimud was born on the 23rd of July, 1907, in Kerala, South India. She grew up in India and graduated with a master's degree in botany. She joined Visakha Vidyalaya in 1941 as a teacher and taught botany, English literature, and mathematics. This rare combination of subjects she taught reflects her diverse and expansive thinking. She became the acting principal of Visakha in 1945 and then served as the principal for 22 years from 1945 to 1967. She's the longest serving principal of Visaka to date. Unfortunately, I was not privileged to be a student in the school during her tenure, because I started in grade one at Visaka in 1970. However, I have greatly benefited from the tremendous work she has done to uplift the school during her time at Visaka and learning from the many teachers she had mentored. Mrs. Pulimud has etched her name in the history of Sri Lankan education as a passionate educator, a visionary, and a woman ahead of her time. She introduced the science stream to Visaka to promote science among girls. She was instrumental in upgrading Visaka to a grade A school and then a super grade school in 1957. The textbook in botany she authored with her sister has inspired many to pursue careers in plant biology. She had earned the respect of students and staff alike. She passed away in 1987 at the age of 80, leaving a legacy that will live forever. Although Visakians of my generation and after were not fortunate enough to have Mrs. Pulimud as a principal, the very high bar she set for a Visaka principal meant that the school continued to benefit from great principals. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge Mrs. Hema Jayasinghe, who was the principal during my time at Visaka, another passionate educator with great charisma who provided leadership to Visaka for 16 years. Building on the momentum gained during Mrs. Pulimud's era, she steered the school forward as a leading girls' school in Sri Lanka. Before I get to the main topic of my oration today, I would like to briefly touch upon an important topic which is close to my heart. Empowering women in engineering and technology, which I will refer to as women in engineering for brevity from here. The 2018 Pulimud orator, Professor Mrs. Ratnayaka, dedicated her oration to this topic. I wish to convey a message on a particular aspect of the same topic, which I believe is pertinent to this occasion and audience, which consists of many educators who can make an impact, similar to the impact Mrs. Pulimud made almost 70 years ago. It is somewhat sad to say that in this 21st century, engineering remains male-dominated. This is the case both in industry and academia. There exists a significant female underrepresentation and as well as gender-based stereotyping. I want to take a moment here to reflect on my journey through engineering. 
When I chose the physical sciences stream for my A-levels, I did not have any idea of engineering as a profession. I chose physical sciences merely for the love of mathematics. That year, there was only one physical science class at Visaka, and less than 10% of the cohort chose physical sciences. At that time, it did not occur to me that I was just starting a lifelong journey in a minority club. It was during my A-level years, thanks to four great teachers who I would like to name here, Mrs. Chitra Malala Sekara, Mrs. Sita Sriwadana, Mrs. Shamali Arya Ratna, and Mrs. Gunasili Vijay Ratna, that I started appreciating the use of science and mathematics in real-world applications. This sparked my interest in engineering as a profession. This picture shows these four teachers with our, four, uh, with our math class, a great bunch of girls. Upon completing my A-levels, I joined the University of Moratua to study engineering. As one of only 23 female students in a cohort of over 230 students, again in the less than 10% minority, I started to wonder if I had made the right choice. Let me give you a simple example of stereotyping in engineering from my first year at the university. It was often the case that I ended up being the only female student in a group when it came to group work for obvious reasons. However, it was not a coincidence that my male colleagues assigned me as the note taker in every instance, while the male students did the more interesting engineering tasks. I'm not blaming any of my male colleagues here because most probably they meant well. They thought that engineering tasks were too hard for females, but this is a stereotype. The expectation of me being the default note taker changed in my latter years at the university after I was able to prove that I was as good as them in engineering tasks. However, my point here is that females must always prove themselves in engineering, whereas it is taken for granted that males are good engineers. Now, as a mentor for many female engineering students, I remind them that they must not be the default note taker in their groups, a practice that continues to date in many places. Fortunately for me, several female role models in engineering inspired me to keep going. Of them, the major inspiration for me was Professor Mrs. Indra Dayawansa, the head of Department of Electronics and Telecommunication and Engineering at the University of Moratua during this time. She was an exceptional engineering educator who demonstrated that females not only could succeed in engineering, but could also lead and excel. I'm so pleased that Professor Mrs. Dayawansa is in this audience here today. In my 35-year engineering career that has spanned four continents, Asia, Europe, North America, and Australia, both in industry and academia, being in the under 10% minority by gender most of the time, I have had first-hand experience of the challenges women in engineering face. Despite these challenges, my experience is that the impact you can make to society as an engineer gives you great intrinsic rewards and satisfaction that outweigh all the negatives. I hope you will not disagree with me if I say that engineers are largely responsible for the advancements that have enhanced our quality of life. The contributions of engineering are evident in all facets of life, including communication, transport, and healthcare. Engineering involves creativity and problem solving. Engineers make a profound impact by changing lives and shaping the world. These are areas where females excel 
and exhibit profound passion. However, it's disheartening that we haven't achieved anywhere close to parity in women in engineering. Consequently, the society is deprived of the invaluable female perspective in this field. Throughout my career, I have actively perceived opportunities to advocate for increased female participation in engineering. I firmly believe that each of us can contribute to making a difference in this. And here is my simple call for action today. Introduce engineering as a viable and appealing career options for young girls and present girls with female role models in engineering from an early age, especially between the ages of 12 and 16, a critical period when they contemplate their future subject choices and careers. I believe that the teachers can make a huge positive impact here. Trailblazers like Mrs. Pulimud have done an outstanding job promoting STEM among girls, which has made a difference in the biological sciences. However, more work is still needed in the physical sciences. In my opinion, the best tribute we can pay to Mrs. Pulimud is promoting engineering and technology to the next generation of girls to make a real change. With that, let me now get to my main topic of today, artificial intelligence, the dream, the nightmare, and the reality. Artificial intelligence, commonly referred to as AI, is receiving widespread attention and generating a spectrum of emotions among individuals. While some embrace it with excitement, others approach it with suspicion or even concern. My aim today is to address the diverse range of sentiments and misconceptions surrounding AI and shed light on this transformative technology to give you a better understanding of its potential implications. Considering the mixed audience here today, my oration will be mostly non-technical. I hope everyone will be able to follow it. During this talk, I will use the terms artificial intelligence and AI interchangeably. AI has become ubiquitous seamlessly integrate into our daily lives, whether we are aware of it or not. I will introduce AI with simple examples, which I believe most of you in this audience can relate to. Many of you, I believe, would have gone to YouTube to watch videos. Some others who are avid movie fans Nowadays, subscribe to services like Netflix to watch videos. In both these cases, when you access the service using the web, you enter a page called the home page. The home page shows the videos that the system automatically recommends for you. What you see here on this slide is an example of a YouTube home page. Netflix also has a similar home page that shows videos the system recommends. Have you ever noticed that the videos that are recommended to you are different to what others get recommended? As an example, here are the Netflix home pages of my son and daughter, which I'm showing here with their permission. If you look carefully, you can see the themes here are quite different. This is AI helping them. The service has learned their preferences. This is an example of machine learning, the foundation of AI. Another simple example of is AI-based navigation applications, such as Google navigation application, which many of you may already be using. It can give you directions, to get to a desired destination from a starting location. This slide shows a screenshot 
of the user interface of the Google navigation application. In this case, the blue line with orange patches shows the route recommended to get from Narahampeter to Visaka Vidyale. The red box on your left, you can see the estimated travel times using different modes of transportation. These travel times are normally quite accurate. In fact, more accurate than what you could estimate yourself. While these estimates take into account the typical uncertainties in traffic, Google is also able to update these estimates dynamically if something major unexpected happens on the road. In this case, not only does Google do this task more accurately than you could do it, it does it way more efficiently. This is another example of AI. Let me now take you through the journey of AI, starting from the very beginning. At this time, artificial intelligence was just a dream. Although the concept of mimicking or even exceeding human intelligence seems to have fascinated humans for centuries, machine intelligence, which is the basis of current AI, was envisioned only in the 1950s. Here is how it all started. This is Alan Turing, a British computer scientist, who is considered the father of computer science. In 1950, he envisioned the possibility of a human interacting with another human and a computer without knowing which one is which and being unable to differentiate them from their responses. This test, then referred to as the imitation game, is now called the Turing test, named after Alan Turing. This is the earliest known definition of machine intelligence, which came about the same time the computers were invented, which is in the 1950s. The Turing Award, considered the Nobel Prize in Computer Science, is named after this great scientist. Another key milestone in the journey of AI was the American computer scientist, John McCarthy, coining the term artificial intelligence in 1956. John McCarthy is recognized as the father of artificial intelligence. He defined AI as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. This seminal definition encapsulates the essence of AI, marking the beginning of the journey of artificial intelligence. John McCarthy was awarded the Turing Award in 1971 for his work on AI. As you can see on this slide, since its introduction, the journey of AI has been characterized by cycles of rapid advancement, refers to as the booms, followed by periods of stagnation, often referred to as the AI winters. AI is currently in its third boom, marked by unprecedented progress and widespread adoption of AI technologies. Boom one, in the very early days of computing, was about programming and processing power of computers being able to deliver intelligence. This approach is now referred to as good old-fashioned AI. Despite this being the very early days, during this period, there were a few bold predictions, such as within 10 years, a digital computer would become the world's chess champion, discover and prove important new mathematical theorems, will even write music, and more. Similar to today, there was significant concern about AI and automation being a major risk to the American economy and society. People feared job losses. However, 
These bold predictions were not delivered in Boom 1, resulting in the first AI winter. The second boom started in the 1980s. There was a shift in the approach to achieving AI. Scientists began exploring the idea of encoding all human knowledge into programmable rules in a computer. This approach, known as expert systems, may be a term some of you in this audience have encountered. A notable achievement in Boom 2 was IBM's chess-playing computer, known as Deep Blue, defeating the reigning world chess champion, Gary Kasparov, in a highly publicized competition in 1997. I doubt this is a milestone Kasparov celebrates in his chess career, but this is a significant milestone in AI and machine learning. However, it happened almost 40 years after the initial prediction. Despite this success, this approach to AI ultimately proved limited in its capabilities and failed to deliver sustained progress. As you can imagine, feeding universal human knowledge as rules to a computer proved impractical resulting in the second AI winter. Let us now transport ourselves to 2016, during the era known as Boom 3. In a monumental event, Google's computer program, known as AlphaGo, defeated the world champion Lee Sedol in a complex strategy game called Go. This is another significant milestone in the history of AI. You might now be questioning, is AI merely a champion of games? So what is the big deal here? But unlike the previous chess victory, this victory marked a pivotal moment that started a new era of artificial intelligence. Scientists had unveiled a revolutionary AI technology that could solve real-world challenges beyond games. As one example, Google repurposed a computer program that was originally used to win the Go competition to a program called AlphaFold to achieve a completely different objective. In 2020, AlphaFold make a breakthrough in a complex problem that had challenged the scientific community for many decades, the protein folding problem. Proteins are the building blocks of our body, which are responsible for many bodily functions. Currently, there are over 200 million known proteins, and more are discovered daily. Understanding the structure of these proteins is vital for disease detection, drug discovery, and a myriad of other medical applications. AlphaFold, the AI-based solution, was able to rapidly and cost-effectively understand the structure of a protein. Before this breakthrough, understand the protein structure used to cost millions of dollars and years of research. This is a pioneering leap in scientific discovery, a milestone duly recognized with the publication in Nature, the premier journal at the forefront of scientific inquiry. If anyone in this audience was skeptical regarding my earlier assertion that engineering and technology underpin numerous innovations shaping our lives, this example should effectively dispel their doubts. So what is behind the success of this new generation of AI we now experience? It is a technology called deep learning, a term that many may be familiar to some of you. So what is deep learning? Let me try to explain deep learning in the next few slides, but please bear with me because this is going to be a bit technical and I will try my best to explain it in simple terms. 
deep learning is a computer learning paradigm inspired by the human brain's neural networks, which are believed to process data iteratively through layers, as you can see in this top figure. Similar to how the brain learns from data, deep learning algorithms learn by processing data through layers of interconnected computing nodes, refining their understanding with each iteration, as you can see in this lower figure. In contrast to the previous approach of expert systems, which relied on knowledge fed as rules, with deep learning, computers are trained to learn from large amounts of data without predefined rules. So this is the main difference here. Deep learning enables machines to perform complex tasks with human-like intelligence. Let me now elaborate how deep learning works using a simple example, an AI application which is able to identify different types of animals in an image. During the first phase, referred to as the training phase, the deep learning program will be presented with many images of different types of animals. During training, each layer of computing nodes in the neural networks identifies different types of features, with the lower layers identifying the very simple basic features, and the higher layers understanding the more complex features. This example shows how the features of an elephant are learned. The first layer learns the basic features, the lines, and each layer learns the more complex features to finally recognize the elephant. Once the model is trained by presenting it with many images of different types of animals, it is ready to be used. That is, when an image of an animal is presented to it, the program will be able to identify the type of animal, provided the model has seen this type of animal during the training phase. So this is important. It can only learn what it has seen. Here are the three scientists who are the key innovators of this technology. They are now referred to as the godfathers of AI, and they were the winners of the Turing Award in 2018. Let me also share with you that the concept of simulating the human brain's neural networks is new. It traces back to the 1980s when the idea of neural networks was first proposed. However, two critical elements were missing then, sufficient data and computing power the neural networks struggle to succeed without vast amounts of data and computing power, both of which were scarce in the 1980s. Today, we are in an era where data is abundant. This data, often referred to as big data, is generated by people and machines. Every online activity we do from Google searches to online shopping, personal health monitoring, and social media interactions contribute to this vast pool of data. Also today, technology has enabled sensing and digitizing everything around us, which also contributes to big data. This is referred to as the Internet of Things. We also have enhanced computing power referred to as high-performance computing, thanks to all those engineers who develop hardware and software. In summary, big data and high-performance computing underpin the success of deep learning. If you're wondering how computer giants like Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI have got to the forefront of this AI technology. One of the main reasons is because they have, have access to vast amounts of data and computing power. This has allowed them to train sophisticated AI models. 
Deep learning has enabled many breakthroughs in different areas. Previously, I talked about the protein folding. But in the medical domain itself, let me share with you some breakthroughs that have hit the news headlines recently. Google's AI device for detecting diabetic retinopathy, a disease causing blindness, secured FDA approval in 2018. In 2020, a groundbreaking implant leveraging AI to enhance brain signals for controlling prosthetic hands emerged. The recent human trials of Elon Musk's Neuralink, a pioneering brain implant that can convert human thoughts to computer instructions is another noteworthy innovation. Let me now show you a short video that demonstrates this technology. This morning, Elon Musk announcing that for the first time, his company Neuralink has implanted a brain chip in a human. Musk saying the person is recovering well. Initial results show promising neuron spike detection. Neuralink's goal is to help paralysis patients communicate by connecting their brain to a computer. The device is designed to interpret your neural activity so you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking. People paralyzed from stroke, from traumatic brain injury, or a spinal cord injury could see the benefits. This would be a major game changer um, if it were to be proven to be safe and effective. The FDA approved Neuralink for human tests last May after years of testing on animals. Here's one electrode on one thread that when we stimulate clot causes a flexion movement of the leg. The company demonstrated the ability of its implants to stimulate movement. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. Allowing a monkey to play a video game. And what better reward for a monkey than a banana? Musk says the first human users will be people who've lost the use of their limbs. But speaking about the long term, he said, imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer. That is the goal. I really do think that in my lifetime as a physician, I'll be able to use this type of technology to help my patients, and I cannot wait for that day to come. Neuralink's engineers aren't the only ones turning science fiction into reality. Researchers elsewhere help this man, paralyzed in an accident, walk again thanks to implants in his brain and spine. And in August, this woman, who had lost her voice to paralysis, was able to have a conversation with her husband again thanks to a mind-controlled avatar. Do not make me laugh. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. While this technology is amazing, you can think of the many ethical considerations around using such a technology in the future. While AI has made many breakthroughs across various domains, let me now focus on an area closer to my research, connected autonomous vehicles and traffic management. Globally, AI solutions are revolutionizing many aspects of traffic management. Examples include the advent of self-driving vehicles that have made to the roads in some countries, the seamless navigation systems guiding our journeys, which I talked about before, intelligent traffic lights that optimize traffic flow, automatic number plate recognition and pedestrian detection, that ensure safer roads, and innovative parking management systems that alleviate urban congestion. These advancements underscore AI's pivotal role in shaping the future of transportation. Allow me to provide a brief overview of my research in this domain. We are moving towards a future dominated by connected autonomous vehicles. Let me first explain what a connected autonomous vehicle is. Autonomous vehicle, or an automated vehicle, also called a self-driving vehicle, can sense its environment and operate without human involvement. That is that red car you see on the slide. In contrast, a connected vehicle can communicate with other vehicles as also the road infrastructure, similar to this blue car you see on the slide. A connected autonomous vehicle combines both, that is the green car you see on this slide. 
As we move towards connected autonomous vehicles, the synergy between vehicles and infrastructure becomes paramount. Imagine a world where cars can seamlessly communicate with traffic lights, speed signs, and other vehicles on the road, leveraging sensing technology and autonomous capabilities to optimize drive times and enhance road safety. Our research group has developed a cutting-edge traffic simulator called SMARTS, capable of simulating city-scale connected autonomous vehicles faster than real time. This system serves as a crucial asset for developing and validating AI-based traffic management algorithms. SMARTS is available in the open source, free for anybody to use. We have also developed AI-based solutions aimed at improving traffic management. These solutions include algorithms for autonomous intersection management, dynamic lane configuration, traffic safety improvement. The main scientific contribution of this work is the novel use of a technique called deep reinforcement learning, a variation of deep learning. These solutions help us move towards a safer, sustainable, and more efficient transport ecosystem. Let us now get back to the journey of AI and move to November 22, another period that marked a pivotal milestone in AI, causing AI to gain attention of the general population well beyond the scientific community. Enter ChatGPT, an innovation capable of generating new textual content in response to user inquiries. The breakthrough technology behind ChatGPT is an innovation called generative AI, which is an offshoot of deep learning, which I introduced before. Generative AI relies on sophisticated deep learning models with billions of computing nodes trained on vast amounts of text data. Such models are called large language models, or LLMs, another buzzword that is floating around these days. Generative AI and LLMs, LLMs have opened up the possibility of a new generation of AI applications that could solve many real-world problems, such as improved customer service, marketing, personal learning, user behavior analysis, and others. While generative AI has created a new way of, of excitement in AI, I will not dwell into the details of these applications today due to limited time. Generative AI has also enabled the creation of diverse content types beyond text music, images, videos, computer programs, and even poetry. Platforms like Bard, ChatGPT, Dali, MuseNet, GitHub Copilot, and AlphaCode showcase the astonishing breadth of capabilities in content generation. You may recall that during AI Boom 1, in the 1950s, there was a bold prediction that within 10 years, computers would have the ability to write music. It has now become a reality, but almost 70 years later. What I'm trying to point out here is that many predictions, which only looked like dreams at the time of prediction, have now become a reality through research and advances in technology. Therefore, some predictions that may appear crazy and unrealistic today could eventually happen. Let me pivot here and talk about the challenges and possible negative implications that AI has imposed on us, which warrant careful consideration to prevent AI from becoming a nightmare in the future. Commencing from education and assessment, 
an area of interest to many educators, is a landscape with evolving challenges. Generative AI has recited in an array of tools that blur the boundary between assistance and plagiarism with unsupervised assessment tasks. This gives rise to a dilemma. Should we revert solely to invigilators' assessments, sacrificing autonomy and flexibility? Or should we harness the capabilities of AI to enhance learning? Addressing this requires a multifaceted approach encompassing formulating ethical guidelines, developing sophisticated detection mechanisms for AI-generated content, and cultivating a culture that values academic integrity and critical thinking. This is a challenge education, educators around the world are currently grappling with. There are also challenges surrounding the use of generative AI for creating inauthentic content, sometimes referred to as deep fakes. As an example, this slide shows how the facial expressions of Vladimir Putin have been modified to mimic a different person's facial expressions by feeding the two images to an AI-based tool called Face-to-Face. -face. Such fake content in the form of images, audio, and video can be used maliciously to impersonate individuals spread in misinformation, and manipulate public opinion. This type of misinformation propagated over social media is not only threatening individuals and businesses, but also governments and democratic processes. Let me take this opportunity to highlight my research on this topic. We have developed a real-time social media analytics platform called Rapid. Rapid can monitor online social media on topics of interest to users to give insights into online activity in real time. Rapid has built-in data analytics algorithms developed by our research group as well as other state-of-the-art algorithms. The rapid architecture is flexible to easily plug in new data analytics algorithms. The novel AI capabilities we have developed include deep learning-based algorithms for the timely detection of misinformation and coordinated malicious activity on social media. This slide shows a recent media article on this research in a national Australian newspaper, The Australian. Let us now get back to the journey to, to looking at some of the possible negative repercussions of AI. AI technologies are widening the gap between those who own and control these technologies and those who do not. This slide shows you some of the recently identified AI billionaires. I believe you will recognize at least some of these faces here. AI also sparks debate over its impact on creativity. AI's ability to generate novel content challenges the traditional creative processes, originality, and the future of artistic expression. Let me share with you an anecdote here. A few months ago, the Pulimud Oration Committee requested for an abstract and a catchy title for this oration. I decided to get some help with the catchy title. I passed an abstract to ChatGPT and requested it to generate some catchy titles. I submitted to the committee one human-generated title along with nine others generated by ChatGPT. And I asked them to select one without saying that some of them were ChatGPT generated. Guess what? The committee selected the only title generated by the human, who happens to be my husband. I would like to acknowledge... <laughs> 
I would like to acknowledge my husband for the title and his support. Looks like ChatGPT may have some ways to go to beat human creativity. There are also growing concerns about the environmental impact of deep learning models. These models demand significant computational resources for training, contributing to increased energy consumption and carbon emissions. For example, generative AI models like ChatGPT have billions of computing nodes in the neural network, as I mentioned before. You can imagine how much power such a model will consume for training when it is trained on almost all the text data on the internet. Finally, numerous ethical, privacy, and bias-related issues surrounding AI require careful consideration. These possible negative repercussions highlight the importance of implementing robust ethical frameworks and regulations to mitigate the adverse effects of AI while harnessing its potential for positive societal change. That sums up the current reality of AI, seemingly mature, but still confined to a narrow domain of expertise and specialized stars, falling short of human intelligence. This is referred to as narrow AI. The forefront of AI technology now aims at artificial general intelligence. Artificial general intelligence aspires to systems capable of versatile understanding, learning, and application across diverse tasks and domains akin to human intelligence. What artificial general intelligence will look like, we can only speculate at this point. The next level, artificial superintelligence, refers to a hypothetical level of artificial intelligence that surpasses human intelligence in all aspects and domains. Artificial superintelligence would vastly exceed human abilities in terms of memory capacity, problem-solving skills, creativity, and virtually all other cognitive functions. This type of intelligence so far has only been seen in science fiction movies. Where AI will take us next is anybody's guess. However, we can be certain about one thing. The current AI technology is here to stay, whether we like it or not. Thus, we must embrace and gain an understanding of this technology and its ramifications rather than evading it. With any technological advancement, there exists the potential for unintended consequences if not carefully regulated and overseen, and artificial intelligence is no exception. Thus, it is incumbent on all who interact with AI to do it with a focus on societal good and ethics serving as the guiding principle. Artificial intelligence, which was only a dream not so long ago, has now become a reality. We must ensure that it does not become a nightmare for humanity. Let me conclude my oration with the well-known quote, with great power comes great responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Thank you Professor Shanika Karunasekara for a very informative and fa fascinating presentation on artificial intelligence. I now call upon the compere Nilushi Devapura to announce the winners of the Pulimud Scholarship for the years 2023 and 2024. The Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for the years 2022 and 2023 is awarded by the Susan George Pulimud Educational Trust. 
The scholarship winners are selected from applicants who have sat for the GCE ordinary level examination at Bisaka Vidyale and passed the GCE advanced level examination at the first attempt. In addition to their academic achievements, the winners are chosen for their active participation in extracurricular activities, sports, and aesthetics, and for their significant contribution to the school by holding positions of leadership and responsibility. In order to award the scholarships for the year 2022, the Susan, the Susan George Pullimood Memorial Scholarship for Bioscience for the year 2022 is awarded to two students, Senemi Nudara Virakodi and Samadhi Satsri Ransarani. Senumi Nudara Virakkodi obtained three A passes at the 2022 GCE Advanced Level Examination and nine A passes at the GCE Ordinary Level Examination of 2019 and was a member of the Junior Prefix Guild of 2018-2019. She won the Class Proficiency Prize and the prize for the best student, Bioscience, along with the subject prizes for Physics and Biology at the annual prize giving. She was also awarded the subject prize for history and Buddhism at the annual prize giving held for the years 2019. Senumi also received a gold medal at the Sri Lankan Biology Olympiad in 2022 and also at the Sri Lankan Chemistry Olympiad in 2023. She was a member of the school army cadet platoon and participated in several camps. She was also a member of the school rifle shooting club and participated in several sports at the annual sports meet. She is also a proficient musician and passed the Bath County Violin Visharada exam with the first class division. I now invite Madam Principal, Mrs. Manomi Senvi Ratna, to present the Susan, the Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Bioscience to Senumi Nudara Virakodi. Samadhi Satsri Ran Sarani. Samadhi obtained three A passes at the 2022 GCE Advanced Level Examination and nine A passes at the GCE Ordinary Level Examination. She was the junior prefect in 2018-2019 and vice president of the Senior Science Society in 2022, uh, 2020 and 2021. Samadhi won the Chemistry Academic Excellence Award in 2021 and the Class and Subject Prize for History in 2019 at the annual prize giving. Further, she was also a member of the General Knowledge Club. Samadhi has represented the school in mountaineering and won the first place at the Sri Lanka School's Mountain Running National Championship held in 2018 and she received a merit award for mountaineering in 2018 and school colors in 2022 at the Colors Awards ceremony. She was also a member of the school hockey team and received a certificate of achievement at the Colors Awards ceremony of 2016. She has also participated and won awards for creative writing, poetry, essay writing, and for several quiz competitions, and has also won the All Island Award for Poetry and Essay Writing. I now invite Madam Principal, Mrs. Mano Misenvi Ratna, to present the Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Bioscience to Samadhi Satsri Ransarani. The Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Physical Science for the year 2022 is awarded to Neloshi Vitanachi.
Nelushi was ranked island fifth at the 2022 GCE advanced level examination, obtaining three A passes. Nelushi also obtained nine A passes at the GCE ordinary level examination. She received a bronze medal at the 61st International Mathematics Olympiad held in 2020 and also received a silver medal at the 54th International Chemistry Olympiad in 2022. She has also won several international awards at Olympiads and mathematics competitions. Further, she also won the gold medal at the Chemistry Olympiad Sri Lanka in 2022 and received the W.G. Gunaratna Memorial Gold Medal for Best Performer at the Sri Lankan Mathematics Olympiad 2020. She has also won several awards at the national level and uh, national level mathematics Olympiad held in Sri Lanka. Nelushi also received the award for the best all-rounder at the annual prize giving for the year 2021 and received the class prize, subject prize in combined mathematics, chemistry, physics, and general Eng English at the said prize giving. She has also studied piano music and elocution and has been successful at examinations in those respective fields. Nelushi was also the recipient of a full scholarship to follow a BSc Honours degree in Chemical Science at the College of Chemical Science. She is presently studying as an undergraduate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Cambridge, pursuing a degree in Bachelor of Science. I now invite Madam Principal Mrs. Mano Misenvi Ratna to present the Susan George Polymood Memorial Scholarship for Physical Science to Nelushi Vitanachi. The Susan George Pullman Memorial Scholarship for Commerce for the years 2022 is awarded to Chanali Vrissimini Ranavana. <laughs> Chanali obtained three A passes at the 2022 GCE Advanced Level Examination. Chanali was a junior prefect in the years 2018-2019 and was a member of the Senior Prefects Guild of 2020-2021. She received awards at the All-Island National Schools Game for Badminton, which was held in 2019 and 2016, and won awards at the Inter-School and Western Province Tournaments for Badminton. She has represented school in LA and athletics at the Divisional Sports Meet and received merit awards for badminton, along with the award for the upcoming player for badminton at the School Colors Award Ceremony held in 2019. She has also participated and placed at several events at the Interhouse Sports Meet and received the award for the best performance javelin throw at the Interhouse School Sports Meet in 2019. I now invite Madam uh, Principal, Mrs. Mano Misenui Ratna, to present the Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Commerce to Chanali Risimini Ranavana. Now, I would like to announce the Susan George Pullimood Memorial Scholarships for the year 2023. The Susan George Pullimood Memorial Scholarship for Bioscience for the year 2023 is awarded to D.V. Sethani Malinsa. <laughs> Sethani obtained three A passes at the 2023 GCE Advanced Level Examination and nine a passes at the GCE Ordinary Level Examination. Sethini was a junior prefect in the year 2019-2020 and was a member of the Senior Prefects Guild of 2022-2023, where she served as the Deputy House Captain of Vera Surya House. She was also a girl guide and completed the requirement of a first class badge. She won the Chemistry Academic Excellence Award in 2021 and the class prize the prize for best student 
and subject prizes for history and geography at the annual prize giving. She has been the recipient of the individual silver medal at the Sri Lanka Nuclear Science Olympiad organized by the Institute of Physics in 2024, and she was a member of the school basketball team. Sethani was the Interhouse Under-20 Squash Champion in 2022 and has won the award for the Best Actress at the Kalawalala Arts Festival held in 2022. I now invite Madam Principal, Mrs. Manomi Senvi Ratna, to present the Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Bioscience to D.V. Sethani Malinsa. The Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Commerce for the year 2023 is awarded to Chamatka Damrasi Setunga. <laughs> Chamatka was ranked island third at the 2023 GCE Advanced Level Examination, obtaining three A passes. Chamatka also obtained nine A passes at the GCE Ordinary Level Examination. She won the Class Proficiency Prize in Grade 12 and the Subject Prize in Accounting in 2021 and the Prize for Western Music in 2020 at the Annual Prize Giving. She was also a committee member of the Drug Prevention Society, ICT Society and Design Club and won awards at the Art and Craft Exhibition Situ Murthy in 2014 and 2012. She has also studied piano music and has received several merit and distinction passes at examinations. Chamatka has completed the first level of the professional qualification at the Institute of Chartered Accountants for Sri Lanka and is presently reading for the second level of the examination. I now invite Madam Principal Mrs. Manomi Senviratna to present the Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Commerce to Chamatka Damrasi Setunga. The Susan George Pulimud Memorial Scholarship for Best All-Round Performance for the year 2023 is awarded to Nisa Arangala. <clears throat> Nisali obtained three A passes at the 2023 GCE Advanced Level Examination and nine A passes at the GCE Ordinary Level Examination. Nisali was a junior prefect in the year 2019-2020, a senior prefect of the 2022-2023 guild, and was the house captain of Dawes House, as well as the school cricket captain in 2022. She was the recipient of the subject prize in Tamil at the annual prize giving of 2019. Nisali has excelled in the field of sports and has been the recipient of Colors Awards for LA, handball, mountaineering, and she received the award for the most talented sports personality at the School Colors Award Ceremony held in 2022. She has participated in several sports at the Interhouse Sports Meet, namely athletics, LA, cricket, and won awards for the best performance in triple jump at the 2022 Interhouse Sports Meet. She was also a member of the school cricket, LA, volleyball, throwball and handball teams that participated and won awards at the inter-school divisional meets, zonal meets and provincial meets. As for Nisali's extracurricular achievements, she received the award for first place at the All-Island Inter-School uh, inter Online Quiz Competition, Ecosia 2021, and was also a girl guide. She was awarded colors for obtaining the President's Guide Badge in 2022, and she was also a member of the Student Parliament in 2020-2021.
I now invite Madam Principal, Mrs. Manomi Senvi Ratna to present the Susan George Pulimur Memorial Scholarship for the best all-round performance to Nisali Tikshana Arangala. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Nilushi. I now invite Dr. Nishanti Vimalaratna, Joint Secretary of the Visaka Vidyale All Girls Association, to deliver the vote of thank. Chairperson of the Pulimud Trust, Chairperson of the Pulimud Trust, President Visaka Vidyale All Girls Association, Principal Visaka Vidyale, Mrs. Manomi Seniviratna, our distinguished orator, Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara, Member of the Pulimud Trust, Mrs. Sita Sirivadana. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Visakians. It is my distinct honor to deliver the vote of thanks on this special occasion. First and foremost, I wish to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara for her enlightening oration on artificial intelligence, dreams, reality, and nightmares. Professor Karuna Sekara, your presentation has provided us with profound insight into the multifaceted world of artificial intelligence. Your ability to navigate the complexities and present a balanced view of AI's potential and challenges has been both inspiring and thought-provoking. We appreciate the time and effort you have dedicated to sharing your experiences with us. Your comments have undoubtedly enriched our understanding and sparked meaningful discussions that will continue well beyond today. I now invite the chairperson of the Pulimud Trust, Mrs. Manomi Seniviratna, to present the token of appreciation to our orator, Professor Shanika Karuna Sekara. Next, I would like to thank Engineer Buddhika Disanayaka for delivering the citation. We deeply appreciate your effort in coming all the way from Australia to honor your good friends, Professor Janika Karuna Sekara. Our sincere thanks go to Mrs. Our sincere thanks go to Mrs. Manumi Seniviratna, President of the Visaka Vidyali Olgas Association. Chairperson of the Susan George Pulmut Educational Trust and Principal of Isaka Vidyalaya for her unwavering support and guidance. Special thanks to Mrs. Sita Sirivadana, member of the Pulmut Trust, a distinguished alumnus, former teacher, and vice principal. Your presence and continued support are invaluable to us, madam. We appreciate Ms. Nilushi Devapura for her excellent comparing of today's event. Our heartfelt gratitude extends to all our donors. Your generous contributions have made this prestigious event possible. We sincerely thank you. We also extend our thanks to the donors of scholarships, Mrs. Kumudini Abbesiri Vodana. Mrs. Nishamani Jinadasa, Dr. Deepa Vimalasena, Dr. Kamala Dizoiza, Mrs. Harini Dizoiza, Mrs. Kumudu Tennakon, and Mrs. Sita Sirivodana. Your continuous support is deeply appreciated. To the school choir and their trainer, Mrs. Samadara Premakethi, for training of the school choir, thank you for your efforts. To the head prefect, Tisarani Malagoda, the senior prefects, junior prefects, and the teachers in charge, 
Mrs. Preeni Dias and Mrs. Ratmali Edrusurya, thank you for organizing the Guard of Honor for our honored guest. Members of the Pulimut Trust, thank you sincerely for the valuable guidance and untiring effort in organizing the Susan George Pulimut Oration annually. A special thank you to the Social Activities Subcommittee and Secretariat Subcommittee of the Visaka Vidyale Old Girls Association 2023-24, Niroshi Jayasurya, Lasini Dialmeda, Tilini Ashirwada and their team for the hall arrangements. Your dedication and enthusiasm have made this event a success. Darshan Ilavatra Bandara and the members of the Ad Shop Private Limited, thank you for your creative contributions and invaluable support. We appreciate the press and media for their publicity efforts. Our gratitude also goes to the Bumble PT OIC and his staff for managing the traffic arrangements. A sincere thank you to the minor staff and our school security for their constant assistance. To all the students who attended today, Thank you for your participation. We hope you found today's presentation enlightening. Finally, to our audience, your presence today is a great inspiration to us and a testament to the popularity of this annual event. We aim to recognize the achievements of our past pupils in academia and research, contributing to the development of our country and its people, both locally and globally. Thank you all for being here. I wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you, Nishanti. We have come to the end of the 33rd Susan George Pulimud or Memorial Oration. Thank you all for your participation. Please rise for the national anthem. Sri Lanka,